Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Um, this is going to be our MIPS 2021 wrap up webinar. Uh, we're calling it the 2021 wrap up, but it's also going to talk a lot about what you need to do to get ready for 2022. So um, we're going to briefly talk about 2021 CMS submission, but then we're going to get into important business for 2022. Uh, my name is Zach Smith. I'm part of the ACR's quality and safety staff. And just a couple reminders about today's meeting. We will record the meeting. Uh, we'll send the recording to all registrants along with the slides. And throughout the meeting, uh, you can enter your questions into the Q&A box. We'll answer them as we go. Uh, and then if we have any questions left over at the end, we'll read those out loud. We can also unmute people if you wanna ask questions out loud. So what we're gonna cover today we're going to start off talking with some key dates for 2021 and 2022. Uh, we're going to give a quick overview of CMS submission. So just jog your memory if you're if you've already done CMS submission in the past, or uh, if you've never done CMS submission through us, we'll walk you through how to do that. We're going to talk about some removed measures in 2022, as well as some new measures that we've added to the QCDR for 2022. And we're going to go over uh, some general QCDR measure submission. And then specifically, we're going to go into the simplified submission for the grid 2.0 measures and the new MSN measures. And then whatever time we have left, we're going to do some Q&A. So a quick reminder about some key dates and deadlines. A lot of you are probably already familiar with these. But uh, on December 31st last year, the 2021 MIPS performance period ended. Uh, and, and January 31st, so the end of this month, is when you should really have all of your 2021 data submitted to ACR. Now, this doesn't mean that we close the portal after January 31st, because people find issues, they, uh, they need to re-upload files sometimes, so you will still be able to resubmit files after January 31st, uh, make any corrections that you need, but we just really want you to have the bulk of your data submitted so that um, you know you're you can worry about making small corrections and not uh, worry about uploading a full year of data. So all through February, you can uh, review your TIN data, look at your performance, figure out what measures you want to submit, what improvement activities you want to submit. And all the way through March 31st, um, you've got that time to finalize your submission. March 31st at 8 p.m. Eastern time is the absolute deadline to submit uh, 2021 MIPS data. Uh, CMS will not accept any submissions after that point. And uh, after March 31st, that kind of brings us into the 2022 uh, performance year. So, You'll have that time to submit data, review your performance feedback through the year, and just make sure you're on target for getting a good score for 2022 MIPS. So uh, to give a quick overview of your CMS submission, uh, I, I wanna remind everybody the portal is open now for CMS submission. So if you're ready to submit, then you can do it now. Um, all of your MIPS performance categories can be submitted through our portal. That includes the quality measures, of course, but also the improvement activities, the IAs, and the promoting interoperability, the PI measures. Uh, all of that can be submitted if you just go to the CMS submission tab in the MIPS portal. Uh, just a reminder, most of you are probably exempt from PI, so you can, you can probably ignore that section, but it is there for anybody who needs it. There is uh, one small difference with CMS submission this year. We are, um, uh, we, we've implemented this, this um, way to block submissions if you haven't submitted your payment to us yet. You should have gotten those invoices a couple weeks ago, I think around January 5th, they were sent out. So uh, if you haven't paid that invoice yet, you won't be able to submit to CMS. If you go to the submission page and try to submit, you'll get a little pop-up that just says you haven't paid yet. Um, so if you have any questions about that, open a ticket with us. If you need to get your payment in, uh, we can help you out. And just like in the previous couple of years, uh, CMS is doing the automatic EUC exemption for non-submitters. Um, now, I always recommend that people 
actually check with CMS just to make sure they're on track to get that exemption. So one thing you can do is go to the QPP page. That's the link here, qpp.cms.gov. If you log into your account there and look at your TIN, you should be able to see if any submissions have been made on behalf of your TIN uh, or uh, your NPI if you're submitting as an individual. So what's happened in the past with some facilities is, you know, they haven't submitted anything through the registry, but maybe their billing company was submitting claims measures on their behalf. And so if CMS is receiving those claims measures, then they're treating that as a quality, uh, a quality category submission. And that submission negates your exemption. If, if any performance categories are submitted, CMS considers you to be fully participating in MIPS and, uh, and then you will get a payment adjustment. So, um, you know, if you want to do the exemption, just double, triple check, make sure that you're all good to go for that. And this is where you'll go to access the CMS submission page. You would start at the Near Dear portal, that's nrdr.acr.org. You'd log into your account and then you'd click on the MIPS participation portal. From there, you'll click on data collection and reports. And then you'll see the tab here. If you look at my screenshot that says CMS submission. Now, when you open that tab, you're gonna see um, these tabs along with some others, you'll see um, an attestation tab as well as a G Pro non G Pro tab. So you can Complete the attestation, which basically says that you have the uh, authorization to submit data on behalf of this facility or this individual. And, uh, and then you can toggle between GPRO and non-GPRO, which uh, indicates whether you're reporting as a group at the TIN level or reporting uh, at the NPI level for each individual physician. You can do both through our portal. And you'll see that there's a tab for quality measures, for improvement activities, and promoting interoperability. So you'll have to complete whichever of those tabs you're required to, uh, to submit. So obviously you're gonna wanna submit your quality measures. You're most likely gonna be submitting your improvement activities through us as well. Uh, but, but again, just be aware, you're probably exempt from promoting interoperability. If you are, don't do anything to that tab. You don't need to fill anything out. You don't need to submit anything. You just completely leave it alone. And this is how you would actually select your quality measures. You would expand out that quality measures tab and you'll see a list of all the tins that are attributed to your account. Now uh, I'm showing this at the GPRO level, but if you're reporting at the individual level, uh, you would see the TIN, but then you would see each individual NPI underneath that TIN. So you can, uh, it, it's similar, it would just be at the NPI level instead of the TIN level. So what you'll wanna do is look at each measure that you plan to submit. First, you'd wanna check the box that says, my group is selecting this measure for MIPS reporting. You would do that for all the measures you plan to submit. And then you would need to indicate your data completeness. So it's going to default to saying my group is submitting 100% of relevant exams for 2021. But obviously, you know, you may be submitting a little bit less than 100%. So if that's the case, that box is there for you to enter your total number of exams. So right here, you're seeing ACRAD 34, a group that has 9,598 exams. Say that group actually performed 10,000 relevant exams, but only submitted 9,598. They would enter 10,000 into that box and that would calculate their data completeness, which would still be around 95%. And that would be enough to uh, you know, submit that measure to CMS. And just a reminder, if your data completeness falls below 70%, then uh, you would not receive a score for that measure or you would just get one point, I believe but you wouldn't be able to get the full 10 points. Now, after you've uh, selected all of your measures, you would click on the save button. That saves your selections and then allows you to submit those selections to CMS. So you'll see here in my screenshot, there's a submit to CMS button. Uh, when you click that button, it transmits your data directly to CMS. Um, but just to be clear, you're only submitting the current category that you're on. So if you're on the quality measures category and you click submit to CMS, that only submits your quality measures to CMS. That doesn't include the improvement activities. There's a separate page for that. And that looks like this. 
So uh, after you're done with your quality measures, go down to the improvement activities and do the same thing. So you can um, click on a button to manage your improvement activities. You'll see what I've blacked out here is just a list of all the NPIs. Um, you'll make your selections either at the GPRO level or at the individual physician level. Once that's done, you'll click on submit to CMS and that will transmit your improvement activity data to CMS. And obviously, if you're required to participate in PI, then you would go to the next tab. It's very similar to the improvement activity tab. You'd fill that out and submit that to CMS. Once you've submitted all of your categories, you'll see a um, view score button next to each category. Now, if you don't see that view score button, that means that that category has not been submitted. So if, if you have filled out your quality measures, but you haven't clicked on that submit to CMS button, you will not see a view score button here. So if you look at the three tens in the example below, the top two have not submitted to CMS yet, and the third one has, and you'll see the date and the time that it was submitted, and you'll see the view score button. Um, now, when you click on that button, it's gonna show you your preliminary score. And I say preliminary because it may not include some bonuses that you're set to receive, and it also won't account for any measures that are getting a same year benchmark. So say a measure is non-benchmarked, um, you would default to three points for that measure. But if enough users submit it in 2021, CMS will calculate a same year benchmark and that measure will be eligible for up to 10 points. So uh, that, that's one reason we always recommend submitting non-benchmark measures because they can potentially net you more points. But obviously CMS can't make that calculation until the performance period's over and they've calculated all of the final data. Another thing that it won't reflect is certain reweighting factors. Now, it will know if you're reweighted for PI. So if you're not required to submit the PI category, then it will put that uh, 25 points into your quality measures category. But the cost category is, that's another one that has to be calculated sort of when the whole performance period has wrapped up and all the data has been submitted. Um, so CMS won't necessarily know that you're exempt from the cost category until the, uh, the entire submission process is wrapped up. So when you look at that view score button, you'll see all of the categories that you've submitted. So if you see a, a score for quality, but you don't see a score for improvement activities, that's going to mean that you have not submitted the improvement activities yet. Um, so, so look very closely at that view score page. If you're seeing a score that's above 60 points, then you're pretty much all set. Um, 60 points is the threshold for 2021. And if you're seeing something that's higher than that, then you'll know that most likely you're going to get at least a neutral or positive adjustment. Um, so double check all those categories, make sure you've submitted every category you're required to submit, um, check the quality tab and check the improvement activities tab. And that pretty much does it for the 2021 CMS submission. If anybody has any questions about it, you know, you can reach out to us. Uh, a lot of you have already been in touch with our team. You've opened tickets for, for assistance. So uh, you do still have until March 31st to get that done, so reach out if you have any questions about it. Now we're going to change gears and talk about 2022. So 2022 comes with quite a bit of bad news, but a little bit of good news, at least from the ACR QCDR perspective. So the performance threshold, which was 60 points in 2021, has increased to 75 points for 2022. This means it's going to be a lot more difficult to get that positive adjustment. Now, in addition to that, CMS has completely done away with any bonus points. So um, you can no longer get bonus points if you submit additional outcome measures, additional high priority measures. Um, they've done away with the end-to-end -end reporting bonus, if that was something you were getting any bonuses for. So that, that, that's definitely going to uh, negatively affect some of our users. So what we want to talk about is how to kind of make up for those points you're losing um, uh, by maybe using some QCDR measures. Now, in addition to those things I already mentioned, they've 
gotten rid of a few MIPS measures, and a couple of them are ones that a lot of our radiologists have used in the past, and I'll go over those in more detail in a minute. Um, but on the bright side, we do have some new QCDR measures that we've added, and, and we're starting to realize that maybe the only way for a lot of practices to achieve a positive adjustment for 2022 and beyond may be to use some of these QCDR measures. And that's because you know, a lot of MIPS measures are getting removed and the ones that aren't removed are for the most part capped at seven points. And so these are the measures that have been removed for 2022. Um, one of them was one of our QCDR measures, ACRAD 39. Uh, that was the low dose CT for kidney stones measure. Um, not a lot of people had reported that measure, which is actually one of the reasons it got removed. Uh, CMS considered it topped out, even though uh, I think only about two tens had reported it, but both of those tens got 100% performance. So uh, that was enough for CMS to consider it topped out and remove it. They've also removed MIPS measures 21, 23, and 154. Those were um, interventional radiology measures that not a ton of our users submitted. So those probably won't affect you too much, but they've also removed 195 and 225. Those are the stenosis and carotid imaging measures and the uh, reminder system for screening mammograms. Now, those are two measures that a ton of our users have relied on over the last few years. Um, probably everybody on this call has submitted those measures. So that was, uh, we're definitely not happy to see those go. And we argued against it to the best of our ability. But once a measure has been topped out for so long, CMS is, is pretty much guaranteed to get rid of it. So in addition to those removed measures, we have a lot of measures that are capped at seven points. These all come from the MIPS measure list. I've highlighted the ones that are uh, most used by our members. So those would be 145, the fluoroscopy measure, 147, the nuclear medicine bone scintigraphy measure, um, 155, the plan of care. I think some people have been reporting that one. And then we've got some of our other radiology measures, the uh, 360 and 364, two of the OPR measures, 406, which is the incidental thyroid nodule measure, and then 436, which is um, the dose lowering techniques for CT. Uh, out of these measures, I think 145, 360, 364, and 436 are the ones that we see the most of. So these are probably measures that you're reporting. And we just want you to be aware that you will not be able to get more than seven points for these measures. A lot of them are capped for 2021 as well, um, but it, it makes a lot more of a difference in 2022 because you see that performance threshold going up to 75. So now we wanna talk about how to avoid that negative adjustment in 2022. So I've got some equations here, which I'll explain. Um, so again, that, that performance threshold is 75 points for 2022. Now the calculations are a little bit different for large practices and small practices. I'll start with the large practices and I'll, I'll explain what I'm doing here. This is assuming that promoting interoperability and cost are both being reweighted for your practice. So that, that might not apply to everybody, but it will apply to most radiology groups. So we say our target is 75 points. Um, the way we do the calculation here is we say six times the average measure score, because you have six measures. So the X is the average measure score here. We divide that by 60 and multiply it by 85. 85 is the uh, reweighted category weight for quality. And then we add 15 points, which is assuming that you get full credit for the improvement activity category. So it is important that you get those improvement activities and that, that, that makes a big difference for your score here. If we do that math, the um, average measure score for a large practice with both of those categories reweighted is gonna be 7.05. Now that means that a measure getting only seven points, uh, especially if you have six measures that only get seven points, that's actually gonna get you a negative adjustment. It's probably a small negative adjustment, but it would be below that neutral threshold. So you would have to get at least seven points for each measure to get uh, a positive adjustment. 
Now for small practices, CMS has changed their calculation with the, uh, the way they reweight PI and cost. So if a small practice has both PI and cost reweighted, then quality and improvement activities will both count for 50%. So the equation here is similar, but I'm multiplying by 50 for the quality category and adding 50 points for the improvement activity category, assuming you get full credit for improvement activities. So again, you have to get that improvement activity credit and it's even more crucial for small practices to get that full credit because it's gonna account for such a large portion of your score. But on the bright side, for small practices, you would only need to get an average of five points per measure. So if you're getting over five points per measure, which if you're submitting point capped measures and you're getting seven points for every measure, that would put you over the neutral threshold and likely get you a small positive adjustment. Um, so that's that's a little bit of a um, positive thing for small practices that should help you out some. But again, for large practices, it's much more difficult to get that seven points um, or more than seven points per measure. So let's talk about the good news. Um, the good news is that ACR currently offers 22 QCDR measures in 2022. Um, previously, we only had 14, so we've added quite a few. We have the six report turnaround time measures. Those are the ones that come from the grid registry. You're probably already familiar with those. Not all of you are submitting them, but you might have seen them at least. We have our one DIR measure, that's ACRAD 34. And then we have our six grid 2.0 measures, which are the new measures we added in 2020. Um, those can be reported either via grid or via simplified submission, which we'll talk about a little more later on. And that simplified submission uses the MIPS participation portal. But in addition to those measures, we have nine new measures, uh, completely new to the ACR QCDR. These were licensed from the MSN Healthcare Solutions QCDR, which was a different QCDR. But the way uh, CMS has the QCDR set up, it's sort of encouraged that we share measures with one another. So what we can do is enter into a licensing agreement where they borrow some of our measures, we borrow some of their measures, and um, we can both report those measures for 2022. So that's what we've done with MSN, uh, and those measures will also be reported by the simplified submission method, which uh, I've linked above. And when I send these slides out, you can click on any of these links. This will give you some helpful information. So I want to start off by talking about which measures uh, are currently benchmarked. So of the ACR measures, the ones that come from GRID or DIR, these measures all have a benchmark, a historical benchmark from CMS, which means they're eligible for up to 10 points each. So these measures are not point capped, they're not topped out. You can get up to 10 points for all of them. Uh, the nice thing about the grid report turnaround time measures is that there are six of them. So that's six measures right there if you perform all of those modalities. And if you're getting a fairly good score in all of those measures, then that could, um, that could easily make up for some of the MIPS measures that are now capped at seven points. ACRAD 34, that's the DIR measure, the dose length product measure. Um, that one also has a historical benchmark. It's also eligible for 10 points. And here are the GRID 2.0 measures. You might already be familiar with these two, but um, these are not currently benchmarked. They likely will receive a benchmark if enough users report them for the 2021 performance year. So. There is still time to get these measures in if you think you can report on any of them. Um, I, I think our numbers have gone up for all these measures. We didn't have a lot of users reporting them in 2020 for uh, I think a variety of reasons, but in 2021, it's picked up quite a bit. Um, so hopefully these measures will have a benchmark soon, but it really all depends on people submitting them. So um, do take a look at those measures. These can be reported via GRID. So if you're registered for GRID, you can report them using the standard GRID exam level data template, but you can also report them using the simplified submission template. 
And here are the new measures. So these, uh, these might be entirely new to you if you haven't seen any of the emails we've sent out over the last couple weeks about it. Um, I believe this was announced just in uh, sort of mid-December. So you might not have heard about these yet. These are all available beginning in 2022. Now these measures are also relatively new, so a lot of them are not yet benchmarked, but the one I've highlighted here, MSN 15, uh, which is the TIRADS measure, that one does have a historical benchmark. So for that one, you can get up to 10 points. For the others, um, right now they're gonna be capped at three points unless they get a same year benchmark. Now, hopefully the fact that uh, we're gonna have people submitting these measures both from MSN's QCDR and from our QCDR, that will hopefully increase the number of people that are using them, which is gonna make it more likely that they'll get that historical benchmark and potentially even the same year benchmark for 2021. And later on in these slides, I do have a link to the detailed specifications uh, as well as the simplified specs. So. When I send the slides out, you can click on that to get more information about each of these measures. We've already gotten quite a few questions about how to report them. Um, so we've got some documents that will hopefully simplify that process for you a little bit. But now I wanna go into just the kind of general process of data submission if you're planning to use any of these QCDR measures. Now we've already been reached out to um, uh, from a bunch of different facilities that are um, that have historically not used the QCDR measures, but are now interested in using them because of the increasing performance threshold for 2022 and the increasing number of measures that have been removed. So hopefully these next few slides will help a lot of people that are maybe curious about these new QC or the uh, existing and the new QCDR measures, but aren't really sure how to begin reporting them. I'll also say the good news is if you want to start reporting them for 2022, uh, it's still early in the year. You can start looking into it now and start kind of working on getting this set up in your practice. You can submit data retrospectively. So I know it's about the end of January right now. You can submit the January data if you're able to pull that data from the system. Um, it, it works just like MIPS measures. You know, you don't have to submit it uh, monthly, but we prefer that you do. Um, but yeah, if, if you want to start submitting in April after the 2021 performance year is over, you can do that. You just want to make sure you can retrospectively pull that data from the beginning of the year and submit all that to us. So once again, the grid turnaround time measures, those are ACRAD 15 through 25, those must be submitted using the grid exam level data upload template. And uh, if you click this link here, that will take you to all the different grid upload templates. It's the exam level template that you'll wanna use for the turnaround time measures. There's no other way to report those measures. And uh, that means you also are required to be registered for grid if you plan to submit the turnaround time measures. So you would need to add grid to your account if you haven't done that already. And then you would upload all this data specifically through the grid portal in your near dear dashboard. Um, so that's separate from the MIPS participation portal, which is where you may be more familiar with uploading data. But once again, ACRAD 36 through 42, those are the grid 2.0 measures. Those can be submitted either way. They can be submitted using this grid template reported through the grid registry, or you can use the simplified submission, which does not require grid registration. But again, that's only for 36 through 42. It does not include the turnaround time measures. And so here's a link here that takes you to general information about grid data submission. So take a look at that in your, uh, in your free time if you're interested in those measures. So now I'll talk a little bit about DIR data submission. Um, again, this is for measure ACRAD 34. That's the dose length product measure for head, chest, and abdomen CT exams. The DIR data is submitted using triad software, which it sort of integrates with your CT scanners and it pulls that dose information and submits it to the registry. Now, beginning in 2022, you want to make sure that all the data coming into DIR is coming from your radiation dose structured reports or your RDSRs rather than secondary capture. And in the next few slides, I'll walk over how you can uh, walk through how you can check that. Um, but any exams that are submitted by secondary capture will uh, 
basically what we'll do is include them in the denominator for AC rad 34, but they'll be excluded from the numerator. And what that means practically is that it will negatively affect your data completeness. And again, that data completeness has to be at least 70% to get full credit for a measure from CMS. So um, you wanna make sure that at the very least, uh, no more than 30% of your exams are coming through via secondary capture because we will not score them at all. It will just immediately take those cases out of your, um, out of your data completeness. And so of course, you can click that link or the link above about Triad software for more information about how to submit to DIR. Now, if you're already a DAR participant and you wanna double check to make sure you're not submitting too much um, secondary capture data, this is what you can do. So from your nrdr.acr.org dashboard, that's just the basic near dear page, you would look under your DIR um, directory, which is under the quality improvement registries. You'd click on DIR and then under the interactive reports, you'd click on CT standardized dose index. And this is going to pull up a report that um, looks like this. It has a bunch of fields that you can edit to narrow down exactly what you're looking at. But what you'll do is go, go to the exam search tab to begin with. And you would choose your corporate account and your facility or the facilities that you want to look at. And then you would set your date to, uh, you know, if you're looking at 2022 data, start at January 1st through the present day. Obviously, you can go as far back as you want. If you want to look at 2021 data, you can still do that. And then under the RPID study short name field, you would want to select these three RPIDs. These are the three that are relevant to ACRAD 34. Obviously, you can check more of the exam types if you want to, um, but the ones that specifically affect ACRAD 34 and thus will affect your ability to report that measure for MIPS are these three. And so if you, if you select those three exams and then apply the filters, you'll see a pie chart that looks like this. The, uh, the blue indicates the percentage of cases coming through RDSR, and the red is how much is coming through secondary capture. So for this practice, they would be seeing a 90.9% data completeness for ACRAD 34. That's pretty good. Obviously, 100% would be better, but uh, as long as it's not falling below 70%, it's not going to hurt your ability to report that measure. So we do recommend looking into this as early as possible. Um, so if you find that you're submitting via secondary capture still and you want to change your submission to be using RDSR data, then try to get on top of that as soon as possible because the longer you wait, the uh, you know, more this is going to affect your data completeness. Feel free to go to our Near Dear support page and open a ticket with our DIR team. Uh, they'll be happy to walk you through how to get this fixed. Um, get your account set up for RDSR. Um, so hopefully you can identify those issues early and uh, you'll be able to report ACRAD 34 for 2022. So now I'll talk a little bit about the simplified submission. Now this works for both the GRID 2.0 measures, ACRAD 36 through 42, and the new MSN measures. Now for the GRID 2.0 measures, again, it's optional. They can use regular GRID or the simplified submission, but the new MSN measures have to be submitted using the simplified template. Um, I mean, the good news is the simplified template is pretty easy to use and it's very similar to the um, MIPS data template you're already using for your MIPS measures. And you upload those files in the same place you upload the uh, MIPS measures, which is under your MIPS participation portal under the upload data tab. That's what you see in the screenshot here. And just like you do with the MIPS measure template, you would upload this template um, and you would see it in your list data and, and it's all very much the same as the MIPS submission process. So this is just an example of what some of these simplified specifications look like. Um, in general, they're gonna be really similar to MIPS measures. So this is ACRAD 37, that's the CTPA for pulmonary embolism measure. 
Um, the simplified specs document will walk you through the basics of the measure, like the description, the denominator, and the numerator. And it also includes all the codes that you would use to populate into that template file. So if you see here, this measure uses the CPT code 71275. And then it requires one of these additional ICD-10 codes. So you would populate the document just like you do for a MIPS measure. The CPT code would go in the CPT column. The ICD-10 code would go in what we call the secondary denominator info column. Um, I believe in the MIPS file, it's called the diagnosis codes column, but it's essentially the same thing. And then under the numerator performance column, you would enter either the performance met code or the performance not met code. This is another one of our simplified specs for one of our grid measures. This is ACRAD 40, which is use of structured reporting in prostate MRI. Uh, and once again, you see a list of four different CPT codes. And then what we have, uh, what we have here is what we call sort of a dummy code, um, which is something that there's not an existing ICD-10 code for, but it's, it's basically a code that indicates that this case meets the denominator requirements. Uh, so whatever is not captured by that CPT code, so for example, with this measure, these CPT codes are basically uh, indicating pelvic or prostate MRI, but they don't necessarily indicate that this is a screening or surveillance exam. So the DX040 ex uh, exam code indicates the rest of the denominator information. So this, this says to us that this case is for prostate screening or surveillance. Uh, and then once again, the numerator code is very straightforward. There's a performance MET code and a performance not MET code. So all of that would be populated into this template. And if you're familiar with the MIPS template, this is going to look familiar to you. Um, most of these fields are identical to what we have in the MIPS template. So you've got exam date and time, physician 10, NPI, the patient ID, patient age, patient sex, measure number, CPT code, and uh, at the end, numerator response value. The only thing that's different is that we, again, we called the um, diagnosis code column, the secondary denominator info column. And that's only because not all of these measures use uh, ICD-10 diagnosis codes. Some of them do, and some of them use these kind of made up codes. Um, but yeah, you, you fill this template out, you upload it to the MIPS portal. Um, and this is just an example of what you would populate for um, some different exams. So for ACRAD 36, you'll see here, there's only a CPT code required. There's no secondary denominator info. So if you enter the CPT code and enter, enter your numerator response, you're good for that measure. Um, ACRAD 37, you'd want to be populating that ICD-10 code into the secondary denominator info. And then for ACRAD 40, you'd want to put in that dummy code DX040. Um, now for the measure number, we do want you to put those grid 2.0 measures in as Q ACRAD and then whatever the number is. Uh, this is only to differentiate from exams that come through the grid registry. So if you're reporting them through grid using the standard grid exam level data template, they're going to show up as, for example, ACRAD 36. But if they come through this simplified submission in the MIPS portal, it will show as Q ACRAD 36. Um, so this is just a way to differenti differentiate them. Um, the data can't be combined, so you can't submit, you know, half the cases through grid and half the cases through MIPS. It's got to be all one or all the other. Um, but uh, that's, that's pretty much what you need to do. It's exactly the same for the MSN measures. And if you look at the uh, simplified specs, you'll see they're laid out in much the same way as those grid measures that I just showed. Um, and a lot of those also include either a dummy code or ICD-10 codes to meet the denominator. Um, but you make that file, upload it to the MIPS portal, and you'll see it in your performance report, uh, just like you see your MIPS measures already. And this is just a summary of some of our helpful links. Um, we've got the detailed 2022 QCDR measure specs here. So if you want to look at the measures in great detail, this is about a hundred and some page document with uh, very detailed information about every single QCDR measure that we use. 
Um, we've also got the QCDR simplified spec. So that's where I pulled the screenshots of ACRAD 37 and ACRAD 40. Um, those are all simplified specs. That's also where you'll find the new MSN measures. And then these links here, um, the template and the file specs, these are the templates that you'll use to do that simplified submission. So you can, much like the uh, MIPS measures, you can use either the Excel or the text template. Um, just make sure you follow the naming conventions and all that. Make sure you're filling out all the required fields. And um, that's all you need to submit those measures. So we really hope people will start using these new measures for 2021 and 2022. Um, obviously, the MSN measures aren't available for 2021, but they are um, beginning you know, January 1st of this year. So if you have any questions about this stuff, um, first of all, feel free to enter some questions into the Q&A because we still have some time. Um, but you can always enter a support ticket here at nrdrsupport.acr.org. Now that page also has a lot of articles that can help you with uh, either if you just need help generally getting set up for some of our QCDR registries, like if you need help getting set up with GRID, with DIR, there are plenty of articles there that can walk you through the, the basics right down to the complicated stuff like the data submission, reviewing your reports and all that. Um, so all that stuff can be found on nrdrsupport.acr.org. You can also just email us at nrdrsupport.acr.org. That opens a ticket automatically. Uh, you can call us or just get some QCDR information from our homepage, acr.org slash QCDR. So with that, um, let's do some Q&A. So um, do we have any questions we'd like to read out loud? Zach, we just got a question in the chat saying, if you could please go over again what users should put in their submission filed field for the name of the nine new measures um, for the grid simplified reporting, or it might be for the MSN measures. I'm not sure. sure. So for the MSN measures, it's, um, I'll just go back to that slide where I list them out. It's going to be exactly what you see here. So, um, if you're reporting MedNAX 55, you would just say MedNAX 55. Uh, you, so for these, you don't have to put the Q in front of them. It's only for those grid 2.0 measures, just because they can come from two different sources. Uh, the Q is there to differentiate them. But for these, it's just exactly what you see here. MSN 13, MSN 15, and so on. Thank you. And then the only other real question that we have um, was in regard to the extreme and uncontrollable circumstances policy. So I just want to reiterate, if anyone has submitted an application to be exempt from MIPS reporting due to an uncontrollable uh, circumstance, you do not want to submit any data through our registry for the year or else it will override your exemption. That's absolutely right. And that, that's why I uh, just advised everybody I'll go back to that slide, but please double check with your um, under your official QPP account. That's where you can look at everything that's been submitted for your TIN or your NPI. So if, if you're going to do the EUC exemption and you don't see any MIP submissions, then you're good. But if you see that quality measures have been submitted or IAs have been submitted, then that is going to override your uh, exemption. I see uh, Sushil is asking about the 2022 grid measures code list. So I, I think that's referring to like the CPT codes that are used for the um, ACRAD turnaround time measures. Uh, yes, we can get that published. I'll talk to our grid people and make sure we've got that list up to date and ready to post. Um, but we will make sure that's available. Uh, now, when you're reporting those measures, you can report them using the CPT code, or you can just indicate the modality. So, um, I mean, basically the CPT codes, say if you're reporting turnaround time for CT, it's just every single CT CPT code. So if it's a CPT code for CT, it's going to go into the denominator for that measure. Um, but if you don't want to put the CPT code, you can just mark CT and it'll put it in that denominator as well. 
Um, we've got a couple questions coming in to the Q&A. Uh, Danica is asking, is there a voluntary submission option for 2021? Um, yes, there is still a voluntary option. Now, um, it's not available to everybody. So if you're required to participate in MIPS, um, obviously there's no uh, opting in, there's no voluntary submission. But if you're one of the physicians who's eligible to opt in, you can, uh, you can opt in and submit data and that would give you a score or you cannot opt in and that would, uh, that would be voluntary reporting. So it would not opt you in to getting a score, but it would submit your data to CMS. So again, the voluntary reporting is like, um, you don't get any sort of score for that, but opting in, does give you a score. And that's only relevant to people that, uh, you know, are below the MIPS threshold. So that's $90,000 uh, of Medicare patients or 200 Medicare patients. Um, if you fall below those thresholds, then you're able to opt in. But if you're above all, all three of the criteria, then there's no opting in, you're just required. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, we have a question from Doris who's asking for measure 405 QCDR indicates three points CMS has no benchmark. Um, so for that measure that one's kind of unique because it, it had a benchmark but then we changed the numerator for the measure. So that measure changed pretty significantly a couple years ago and it lost its benchmark temporarily. Um, it should receive a, a definitely a same year benchmark for, for the years that it didn't have a historical benchmark. And I believe in 2022, it should have a historical benchmark again. Um, but for a couple of years there, because, it, because the benchmark went away with the measure being changed, it, um, it lost that benchmark temporarily. Yeah, and I can confirm that on the um, January version of the benchmark file, it does not have a benchmark currently. Didn't think so, yeah. Probably gonna depend on 2021 submissions. So um, unfortunately that, that, that is a pretty popular measure. So I think it's gonna have enough submissions to get a same year benchmark and then eventually a historical benchmark probably for 2022. The most recent benchmark list that CMS published in January does have 405 with a benchmark. Oh, that's great. Okay, well, that's good news then. So that means that for 2022, it's official. got a chat from Logan that says that she's not heard of any of this and um, is not sure that this is something she'll have to participate in. Um, Logan, if you could submit a ticket uh, to NRDR support, we can take this offline and help you further. Um, you just have to check on, depending on your TIN and your positions and PIs, like whether or not you're required to participate. But if you submit a ticket, we can help you out. Yeah, one, one helpful resource is it's called the QPP Participation Lookup. So if you just type that into Google, it'll take you to a CMS page. Uh, that's the QPP participation lookup. And honestly, that's, that's a good resource for anybody who participates in MIPS because it not only tells you if you're required to participate in MIPS, it also tells you if, uh, if you're considered non-patient facing, which would let you know if you're exempt from certain categories. So you can search your TIN and it'll tell you right there. And Karen just put it in the chat. Thank you, Karen. I would say most likely you're probably not required to participate. If, if you are not familiar with it up to this point, I think this is about the fifth year going into the sixth year of MIPS, something like that. So uh, you're probably not uh, an eligible practice, which is <laughs> good for you. Okay, uh, we'll maybe give it a minute for some more questions. So feel free to type in the chat like people have been doing or type in the Q&A box.
And I'll go back to our uh, resources page here. So if anybody has questions, if anybody wants to put in a support ticket um, or send us an email, please feel free to do that. I would like to mention, uh, you know, maybe some people on this call are in the process of being audited uh, because every year we do have to reach out to a certain number of practices and audit their MIPS data. So if you're being audited, you might have already received an email. If not, you'll be receiving one soon asking you to upload your validation for the improvement activities because we do have to audit the improvement activities this year as well. So go ahead and be ready to do that. You would just upload that to your share file um, like, like you uploaded your um, data your, for, uh, for your quality measures. So just a heads up. If you're not being audited, then don't worry, but <laughs> you might be audited next year. So stay on your toes. Okay, I'm not seeing any other uh, questions. So, um, I think we can wrap up for today. We will have probably one more webinar closer to the end of the submission period. That's mostly just going to be a Q&A webinar. It's not going to have much of a presentation attached. So everybody will receive an invite to that. And uh, feel free to join us if you've got any kind of last minute questions about your 2021 submission. So I want to thank everybody so much for joining today. And I hope you all have a great weekend. Thanks.